This is my ThinkPad X230. I've had it for three years now and it has served me really well. This model was released in 2012. It has an i7-3520M CPU, 8GB of RAM, a 250GB SSD, and a 12.5-inch IPS display. My desktop PC is slightly more modern, so this laptop does not need to do anything intensive. It's pretty lightweight what I use it for. I watch a lot of YouTube videos and live streams. I do basic web browsing, looking up stuff, that sort of thing. I do my Anki reps sometimes on this laptop. I play Pokemon Showdown random battles. I do that a lot. I may have a problem. I played Half-Life. I've always been more into console games rather than PC games, so I don't really have too much experience with classic PC games. So I think it could be cool to play some of those. If you have any recommendations for classic PC games from the 90s to like mid 2000s, then leave them in the comments. I use Linux Mint as the operating system because Linux tends to run better on older hardware. And I'm not actually even sure if this thing would pass the Windows 11 system requirements. Also, it's just interesting learning Linux. Mint is the only distro that I've used so far. It's been good, it's been solid. All of the aforementioned stuff has worked perfectly fine, so I don't really have any reason to go to any other distros, but it would be interesting to see what's out there. Maybe I'll do that at some point. The boot time is not fast, really. It depends on what you're used to, but I wouldn't really describe it as fast. It's fine, though. I, I think it's okay. Um, what I really wanted to show here is maybe the best feature that this laptop has. It's, it's very good. Okay, prepare yourself. I'm going to press the function and space key at the same time the keyboard lights up. But that's not everything. The keyboard lights up even more. And if I do it one more time, boom, the think light. This is maybe the coolest thing ever. When I acquired this laptop, it had a few problems. And over the three years of owning it, I have done no repairs to it. I've, uh, I've been too lazy. I will now perform an evaluation of this ill-omened apparatus. Problem number one. The temperature goes very high very often. And because of that, the fans go very loud very often. The previous owner did not mention anything about a repaste. So it's very possible that the thermal paste is from the factory. The consistency of the thermal paste is probably similar to that of sand. Now, I don't believe that a repaste will do all that much, because this is an old laptop CPU with an old laptop fan. It's old, and it's a, it's a laptop. There's only so much a repaste will really do. But it can't really hurt, unless I break something. I'll try to not break something. Problem number two, missing rubber foot. I don't know when it happened, I have no clue. One day I noticed that the, the ThinkPad was more wobbly than usual. It was on an even surface and I pressed on one of the corners and it, it wobbled. I, I thought, it doesn't do that normally. That's when I discovered that one of the rubber feet was in fact missing. I haven't seen it since and I don't know where it went. I suppose that's just something they do. Problem number three, this little drive caddy that holds the SSD has a cover and that cover has broken off. I noticed some weird gunk around the area where it broke off. Looks like some sort of epoxy or glue. I'm guessing that the previous owner broke it and used something to put it back together and now that something has given up. Whatever the case may be, both this and the rubber feet can very easily be found online. Problem number four, 
This X230 battery currently has a max capacity of 34%. 34. That's, that's one third. It was 58% when I bought it, and over time I've just seen it go lower and lower. It became something that I was used to, because, I mean, the starting point of 58 is not very good to begin with. So I got used to the fact that this thing just wouldn't really last at all. From the beginning, it's never really lasted longer than an hour, and I just never bothered to get a new battery. There are some complications when it comes to getting a new battery, because Lenovo, of course, didn't want people using non-OEM batteries. You need to do a bit of a BIOS patch. I don't know how to do this. I've never done this. It's kind of scary, but I found some instructions and they seem pretty solid. So I guess I just gotta do some reading. Call this the ThinkPad because I'm gonna be tinkering with it today. I opened up the laptop and did the whole repaste. It was very easy. It was very much not complicated. I hadn't fully opened up the ThinkPad before. I had cleaned up some dust and I think I'd removed the keyboard before just to kind of see how it works. The maximum RAM that this laptop can hold is 16 gigabytes, and I currently only have eight, but I think I'm gonna keep it that way because I don't think I've ever gone even close to eight gigabytes of usage on the RAM. Also, I think anything that would require 16 gigabytes of RAM would also run into problems with the CPU and the integrated graphics. I guess I could have more tabs open in my web browser, but I'm not the type of person to hoard browser tabs, I get rid of them when I no longer need them. But yeah, back to the repaste, I had actually just no problems. I was expecting something to go wrong, some kind of cable where I don't know where it goes, or some extra screw that I'm left with at the end or something. But no, I put everything back in, closed everything up, pressed the power button, booted perfectly normal, no problems, love to see it. Next I applied the new storage cover and the rubber foot. The rubber feet that I got didn't have any kind of adhesive. I had to get a little creative with some double-sided tape, but the end result is perfectly good. Can't even tell that there's a piece of double-sided tape under there. It's one of those like phone screen double-sided tapes. I think I got it to put my Game Boy screen lens back on and it worked perfectly for that. It's worked perfectly for a lot of things. It, it's been surprising how often I found use for that. So I recommend getting some thin double-sided tape. But with problems number one, two, and three solved, time for the battery. Specifically what I need to do is patch the embedded controller. The first step is updating my BIOS, not to the latest version, but the second latest version. I've never done a BIOS update. Just never done one. Haven't needed to. Um, I've heard about the horrors. Thankfully, everything went fine. There were no problems. I will admit I was very scared. Next, I had to do the EC controller patch and it was kind of similar. I don't know if there's as much potential for damage with this. I'm guessing yes, but it went perfectly fine as well. There were no problems. And after it was done, the battery worked as it should. The track point is pretty neat. I kind of like it. I believe if there was a good trackpad on the ThinkPad X230, I would probably use the trackpad over the track point. However, we do not live in such a world. I don't really like carrying a mouse with me, just not really into that. So I use the track point quite a lot. Every time I use it, there's a little bit of a, oh yeah, this is how it works, huh? It never really feels perfect, it never really feels quite right, and I would not use it for anything that requires any sort of precision. It's okay for what it is, and it has character. It has uh, it has soul. Them getting rid of the track point in the new, new ThinkPads, embarrassing. Genuinely insulting. The ThinkPad logo has a red dot. What do you think that red dot represents? Where do you think that shit comes from? You think that's just a random red dot they added for no reason? I was already mostly done with this video, but there's been a little bit of an update. There's two of them now. This one is the X230 
that I've been talking about that I've had for all this time. And this is an Axe 220. I didn't mean for this to happen. It was just a deal too good to pass up. The price that I paid for this Axe 220, including the charger that you see maybe over there, is uh, 10 euros. Doing this with one hand is really awkward. Yeah, this keyboard right here is a little different from the... Actually, let me just take out the X230. You know, you've seen enough of the X230. You know what the X230 is. This keyboard right here is uh, a little different from the X230 keyboard. I'm thinking of doing a keyboard swap. So I'm going to be taking this keyboard and this palm rest and I'll put it into the X230. It uses the same embedded controller patch that I did for the battery. So I'll just have to do that again. I actually have it prepared. I have like a... Wait, it's like over there. <laughs> wait a moment. That USB stick has the embedded controller patch ready to go. All I need to do is just take out that keyboard, put it in the X230, and then do the patch. And clean it. I also need to clean the keyboard, actually. What do you call them? Like the the legends here? I think that I think that's the term. The legend is a little scuffed with some of these. Honestly, there's more parts from this that I can put into the X230 than I can't. SSD bay cover here, the keyboard, the trackpad, the palm rest, the screen, the whole chassis, the battery, the RAM, the screws, rubber feet. All of that is uh, interchangeable between them. Whenever anything comes up with the X230, rather than having to buy it online, I can just take it from this thing. It's finally done. As you can see from the number here, it says X230 and it has the keyboard. This was supposed to be like a really quick, easy thing I just do. This is the same day that the X220 arrived. The easy patch was less than a minute. Literally just put in the USB, click enter and we're done. Taking out the keyboard from the X220, no problems. It went perfectly. You know, cleaning up the keyboard I did the best I could. Putting the keyboard into the X230 was also perfectly fine. There, there was no problem. The X230 keyboard has a backlight. The X220 keyboard doesn't have a backlight like that. So if you just put in the X220 keyboard into the X230, the pins that correspond to the backlight basically like burn out. You should block those pins so that they don't make contact. That was way more difficult than I, I thought it would be. I thought it would be a simple, you know, put some tape over the pins and that's it. I had to take out those screws holding in the ribbon cable so many times. There was some really weird behavior from the keyboard. Like at, at some point I had like tape, I guess at some wrong point or something, or it was too thick. And my, my screen saver. Back to the nightmares, what I was explaining. What kept on happening was that for some reason the, the track point so this, this red nub would work perfectly fine, but nothing else about the keyboard worked. It was just the weirdest thing of like, why why does that work, but then everything else doesn't work? I was just really worried that the, the keyboard itself was like non-functioning. The X220 did not have any kind of operating system, so I could only go into the BIOS. So it's not like I could really properly test the keyboard there. Or, you know, maybe when I was messing with the ribbon cable, I accidentally like broke it or something. I'm really, really happy with it. I, I like the feel of it a lot. Also, you can see this thing in the background here. <laughs> I had to use this a little bit because there was a little point there that was cracked. My whole workspace, my whole table here is insanely messy. You can only see a part of it and I'm, I'm not going to show you the rest of it because it is truly something. There's like paper everywhere. I have like, I had to like take out the isopropyl alcohol for the the keyboard cleaning and then I just have like tape everywhere and, like multiple scissors I'm just so happy that everything works there's a lot of pain there's a lot of problems there's a lot of annoyances but when everything finally works it is just really really nice